up troops, welcome back to the Latana Army, I am Lit, and this is, well it's not technically Fortnite Save the World, it is a bit of a podcast. Now I'm doing this in such a way, most of the video is not going to have a, you know, like me on camera in it, it's actually just going to be something that you can have on, you know, in your car, might be something that you want to, you know, you might be playing Fortnite Save the World and have this on in the background, but just something that you can listen to and, you know, have on and hopefully enjoy. But I've got a really special guest for this first ever episode, I'm really looking forward to it, and I hope you guys like it as well. So, you know, I'm going to let him do his own intro, just because he's such a, a big player in the Fortnite Save the World community, and I kind of want to bring us all together a little bit more, so that we are doing more stuff together, and I thought this was a great way to start, and, you know, I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I enjoyed doing it. So, stay tuned, and guys, I'm going to let you meet the legend himself. Hello, this is David Dean. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect classic intro. Well, welcome to the show, David. I'm going to do these Let's Talk uh, little snippets uh, over... I'm probably going to do them every Wednesday. So massive, massive thank you for being my first guest, man. I really appreciate that. It is an honor. <laughs> well, I've got some questions that I'm, I want to put to you as well, but I've also got some from the community that people have left. I put in my community tab yesterday, uh, do you know, that I'm speaking to you today, and I wondered if anybody wanted to ask, do you know, some uh, individual questions as well. But the one that kept coming up most, the one that came up all the time, I'm, I'm guessing you can already tell what this is, is about the gnomes. <laughs> <laughs> people want to know what's the, what's the full story or what's your full theory on the gnome situation in Fortnite Save the World? <laughs> <laughs> well first of all the gnome thing is something me and my daughter have kind of always had um, okay we traveled all over the world um basically every two years we we're moving and we'd always make jokes about the gnomes are something you find all over the place <laughs> in people's yards and stuff and we're in all different countries yeah it's evil gnomes <laughs> do the neighbors have gnomes make sure they don't have gnomes because they have gnomes they're you know, they're bad people. And then, of course, in Fortnite, you got a bunch of different little things they've added in, which I think are great. The teddy bears, the flamingos. Yeah. But the gnomes, I noticed they put in weird places, you know, <laughs> looking in people's bathroom windows and other things. And it was, okay, that's a little bit different than the other stuff. But when they updated Canny Valley, and remember, yeah. Canny Valley was originally Cannibal Valley. Um, oh, is that true? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So, um, and actually the whole Fortnite game was supposed to be much darker and uglier than what it is. Um, wow. But um, the gnomes, you start seeing them and yeah, you see one in a helicopter. <laughs> and he's in <laughs> Yeah, we've seen that one. But it's like, okay, that, that looks a little weird. And then he's driving a forklift and moving stuff around for tanks. <laughs> and it's like, hold it. They don't do that with the flamingos. They don't do that with the teddy bears. <laughs> yeah, There's the teddy something bears going are quite on here. <laughs> so what's the weirdest place that you found one in so far then? What's the, what's the most suspicious place you've found a gnome so far? We found one in a coffin on one of my videos. Yeah. Uh, it was just laying there in the coffin. So what's the yeah. weirdest place you've seen one so far? One of my favorites, there's one cliff on um, Canny Valley maps that'll show up where you have the top of a coffin hanging over a cliff edge with rocks <laughs> on one end to hold it in place. And then there's a stack of drunk uh, beer bottles, empty beer bottles. And, and it looks like the gnome slammed down a six pack and is getting ready to go cliff diving <laughs> off of this coffin lid. Hey, um, it's I see what you mean, though, about it being, there's like a dark side to it. And I think there's some bits they might have forgot to take out. I saw one bit with a wheelchair on the edge of a waterfall yeah. in Canny Valley. I was, gonna, I was just getting and ready to nobody's in it. One. So and it's quite dark in places. And that's the beginning of the game. Yeah, I remember that now. I remember that now. That's, yeah. That'd be quite interesting to maybe do a video on to have a look at, you know, like kind of like a dark sightseeing kind of thing. Have you seen that new thing? I don't know if you've got it over there in the States. We've got a thing called Dark Tourist on Netflix at the minute. No, it's like a TV series, and it's it's basically it goes visiting like dark, you know, like dark tourist attractions, if you like. But you yep. could probably do something like that in Fortnite if we get enough of these things together. If people can comment down below and tell us what they've seen, maybe we could do that together. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. And I got lucky because, as you know, I don't like editing my videos. To me, it just takes kind of the fun out of it. I like yeah. the spontaneous, non-edited. Yeah. And um, I was trying to figure out whether I should let somebody else do the video or whatever. And I made a comment to Aiden Harris about it. And then like five minutes after I made the comment to Aiden, I got into a mission and 
they had all the different ones I had on the video, obviously. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, this never happens. I never get the, all of these different ones in one video. So it was like, nope, I got to do this. I got to get the word out. <laughs> and spread the conspiracy. Yes. <laughs> All right, another another question that we got then a lot asked a lot. I want to get the two big questions out of the way because I know this is what a lot of people are listening for. A lot of people are quite fascinated that you were in the you were in the military, weren't you, for quite a long time? Yes, 22. So 22. Wow. So if you could tell us kind of like what your as much as you can tell us. I mean, I don't know if you were in the, you know, secret services or what, but you know, if you were like you could have been special forces and you can't tell us, but I just wondered like what you did out there and kind of, if you could condense it all into a little like snippet for us to kind of let people know what you did. I think loads of people are interested in that. Me, me especially. All right. This might get a little bit long because it's a little That's insane fine. I've, story. I've, I've got a cup but, of coffee um, right here. I'm going to sit back. <laughs> um, I've mentioned it before. I grew up a farm kid and actually my dad's farm went bankrupt. Um, I always planned on moving away and going to college and I wanted to go to NASA. I wanted to work. Wow. With um, and I heard that NASA getting hired on, if you're former military, yeah. they give you more points. So you're more likely to get hired. And okay. I had no money and I didn't want to work at McDonald's, you know, <laughs> you know, 60 hours a week on top of going to college. So yeah, I was definitely. like, okay, I'll go military for four years and see what happens. And of course, military recruiter, I did my testing, did really good. And they're like, oh, we're going to put you in a high end electronics field. Wow. It's like, awesome. Great. And then I got in and they made me an interior electrician. And it's okay. like, that's so what kind of not... things did you do with that then? Was that on base or was that? Well, I tra- got really lucky because I got sent over to England. Um, oh, for well, that is lucky. I'm not going to lie. That's probably the best post you could have got, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Actually, it was because I did a heavy construction unit. So oh, right. when you yep. see heavy base Kyle with his gear on <laughs> and his belt for oh, tools. So there's a story to it. I get that it. was there's me a link. for 10 years um, <laughs> doing heavy construction. I went all over Europe. Um, wow. I, I thought I was going to hate it. I loved it. Then I went to Minot, North Dakota, got off right? the plane. It was minus 30 degrees temperature. Oh. Uh, insane <laughs> cold, but I worked with great people for a couple of years. And then went to Kunsan, Korea, and wow. then Frank, uh, Frankfurt, Germany. Just, and what, what was it like in Korea? Same, I mean, was it? Yeah. I mean, was it was it quite hostile over there, or was it was it nice? I mean, I don't know much about. It was nice. Know. It was great. Yeah. I I've always been somebody who loves anything different or foreign or new, like new um, cultures. Yeah, I love different cultures. I can't learn a foreign language to save my life. <laughs> but it's never been an issue because basically if you're patient with people and you show you're trying, usually yeah. they'll go out of their way to help you out. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. But Korea was amazing. I absolutely loved it. Um, Germany was insane. We lived in the black forest. I had wow. this Audi car that I drove 120 miles per hour down the Audubon <laughs> every day to work and every day back. But it just flew. But the strange thing is driving 120 miles per hour and having somebody just fly right by you <laughs> in their Ferrari or something. And it's like, wow. But um, that was amazing. Spent a few years there, then San Antonio, Texas. But um, actually, ah, <laughs> a little bit on the personal side, I hate to go into something. But yeah, basically... Um, my wife was sick for a long time and she passed away when I was 26. Um, oh, man. and Sorry I had to, to that. regather my life, restart it. Um, and but you had I was the little the one as, you had the little one as well. Yes. Oh, so wow. I went and got my degree in physics, um, then became an officer. And I really didn't even know the air force did space. And I got put into the U S space command. And wow. <laughs> the first job was out in um, Wyoming, down in the missile silos. I was right. a key turner. And wow. um, I hate nuclear weapons. Um, oh. I have a very, very profound understanding of what they can do. Um, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. But fortunately, I was out there, and I actually helped take over 500 nuclear weapons off the um, missiles. 
and oh my basically warehouse them and destroy them. So Man, that's that amazing. kind of a good thing. And then then the reason I love the military is they kept changing my job every couple of years where most people <laughs> work a job and they spend 45 years of their life working that exact same job. Yeah. Or at least um, in but, the same department kind of thing. Yeah, but since I did good with the missiles, they sent me down to Cape Canaveral where I was <laughs> I, love, I just, just stop you there. I, lo- I, love how, I love how, like, humble you are with that. And just since I did so well with the missiles, they... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would, just a sentence I would never be able to say. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I did a good job on the missiles. So. Yeah, but it's also weird down there. When I got to Cape Canaveral, I was one of the few in the military that was a total space geek. I loved every aspect of NASA and everything. So wow. while all the other military guys only wanted to work the military missions, I wanted yep. to work all the NASA missions. Oh, so while yeah. I did work the GPS missions and weather satellites, military weather satellites, I also got to do the Mars rover missions, um, the Pluto mission wow. that just... So what was, your, what was your role in those? Tell us a bit about that. That's awesome. Um, so you're kind of living the dream that you set out to do yeah. there. You said that you wanted to <laughs> go into the military to get into the space side of things, and then here you are. Yeah. You know, after this incredible journey, and there you are working on these these amazing space missions. Yeah, it was insane. And just to let people know, because it gets very confusing. Um, because yep. there's Cape Canaveral and then there's Kennedy Space Center. Kennedy Space Center does all manned missions. That's where um okay. space shuttle is. Did not touch yep. that. Right. But okay. All they're divided is by a little bit of water. And then you go over to Cape Canaveral, which is an Air Force station. We own the launch pads. So every wow. mission that gets launched that does not have people on it, yeah. it's just a rocket going up, is being launched from an Air Force station where we own the launch pad. Wow. And, and you were involved you in all of those. Um, the satellite customer, which um, sometimes was military, sometimes was NASA. And yeah. then you had the launch company, whether it was Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and now SpaceX. Um, wow. And so you have all three te- teams overseeing everybody else and triple checking everything. And so I would be out on the launch pads, walking up and down the um, gantry and everything else, checking out the rocket. Well, my wow. team was, I was a team leader. And so, but you've then, got some incredible photographs. Did, did you take many photographs out there? Yeah, and it was you insane put- because you're right on the ocean. So you would be standing up at the top of the rocket looking down, and you can see dolphins swimming in the ocean. <laughs> and, you know, coming from the Midwest, it just blew me away. It was insane. I know um, you've, you've not done a face reveal yet, but do you know yeah. when you do or when you're ready to do that, you know, or if, if you do that? But you should put these photographs on your community page. People would absolutely love to see that. <laughs> I definitely yes. would for one. I need but that's to start incredible. More. Um, definitely doing more of that. It's just kind of weird being fifty and doing this. <laughs> and that's I'm not, I'm not saying, far behind you though. I'm I'm thirty nine. I'm not far behind I, you. <laughs> I keep saying I'm a very unremarkable person that's just fallen into a totally remarkable life. Um, <laughs> but I yeah, know. I did the space launch and like. For the Mars rover mission, I was, for the Air Force, the flight launch commander. So I was sitting in with all the other launch personnel with my control um, panel. I had hold, no hold authority, so I could stop the launch if I needed to. Wow. And um, and then I did good with that, with the Delta II program. So they put me in charge of the new Delta IV program. So what's the Delta IV program? That is the one. Now it's going to be the one launching the new wave of manned missions for um, the U.S. But at that time, it was the new big heavy rocket. And wow. when we launched that one for its maiden flight, it shook our building to the point that ceiling tiles were popping out and you could see <laughs> the glass on the windows wow. going back and forth. And it was awesome. <laughs> That's one of them you wish you had the camera phone so you could have filmed that moment. Yes, it was just amazing. <laughs> and it was great. I never wanted to leave Florida. I never wanted to leave um, Space Launch. But it's the military. You don't get a choice. Um, oh, so do you, get, do you get to a point where to, they just say, That's it? Yeah. You oh, do I your, didn't know that. Now, the um, different mil- branches do it different. Some branches let you decide, hey, I want to stovepipe my career. All I want to know is about this one area. 
but you realize you limit yourself how much you can get promoted. Uh, but yeah, because the Air you didn't Force want to... does it, or they did at that time that, hey, we want everybody to train and be ready if they become a four-star general someday. And if you're a four-star general, you need to know everything across the board about the military. So they would just um, keep forcing you to change um, your job. So when you get higher up, you would understand all the different ones. So what's the highest rank that you reached then? What rank did you, what rank did you actually reach up to? Um, since I, I'm on the enlisted side, I was getting ready to be a 10 year tech sergeant. And then I uh, switched over to the officer side and I got up to major. Wow. You, so you got all the way up to major. Yeah. So, so but let me get this I right. Mean, it sounds really different. impressive, but as long as you do what you're supposed to and don't get in trouble, you're going to make major. <laughs> it's after that, it gets a little bit more difficult. What's after that? Is it colonel after that? Or is it a colonel after that? Um, Lieutenant colonel. Lieutenant colonel, then colonel, isn't it? Yep. Got it. Okay. But wow. yeah, and I haven't talked about this before, but after I did space launch, they sent me to Colorado where I was in charge of basically it was a center for inducing space assets into the Air Force virtual or um, gaming system for All exercises. Right. So I had a team of computer programmers, a computer specialist. And then when we would have a big event for training, um, kind of like the gaming system where you play on, um, we would do updates and put in information. So instead of having Husk attacking, um, yeah. we would put in the drone um, predators and wow. we would show what Russian spy satellites could see and not see. And, That's amazing. Um, yeah, and that was at the upper, we were da uh, upper um, security limits. I was down in a vault, um, never saw a light of day during work. <laughs> Um, wow. So, so but, you had, yeah. did you uh, did you get onto the bug fixes pretty quick, or were you more an Epic game style? Just let it run for a while. <laughs> <laughs> or did you actually? Or did you actually? Did you have many bugs and stuff to fix as well? We always had something on the fly. Also, I was in there from the transition period where we had senior le leadership not understanding computers or satellites or space. Oh, and the younger generation coming in and did understand it. So, like, we would have um people it's like okay we need you to park all the gps satellites over this country and we'd have to explain to the general you don't park satellites satellites <laughs> orbit around the earth i don't care i want that satellite parked over that country so you just have to kind of go yep yeah, okay we'll, we'll we'll park it now yeah we have to talk it through and the same thing with the computer bugs and stuff like that um, they would make insane requests that was like, <laughs> yeah, we'll get to you in about 10 years time with that update. <laughs> but yeah, and that was with CIA, um, NSA, um, NASA, wow. all these different organizations. And it was insane what I learned and yeah. <laughs> so I should imagine you can quite probably appreciate on it, I mean, this is on two different, completely different levels, but you can probably appreciate sometimes the coding and that's behind a game like Save the World and things like that. Does it relate at, at all? Yeah, and when they talk about, hey, we're trying to do a fix these bugs versus new content, and some people will get upset. How come you're putting out that new graphic when yep. we still have this bug over there? Well, it's, yeah. yeah, you don't have everybody working one issue and different people do different things. That's kind of normal yeah, yeah know, absolutely throwing 10 people at a problem that only takes two people to fix makes things worse so yeah bad resource bad resources in it really in that sense yeah and then um after <laughs> like i said my life is weird hey, um, this, is, this is all that, great i got chose to go to the state department to be in charge of um military sales overseas reviewing the technology and determining if um, we should give that um, knowledge any to anybody else. Wow. So, okay. So yeah, whether you give it to other countries and that kind of thing. So I was writing up packages for Congress and doing um, working back and forth with congressional staffers, and then wow. talking to like the head lawyer at Boeing, who's working a deal with Kazakhstan and Russia 
on um, stuff. It was just insane. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, met with foreign ministries from Israel, um, South Korea, and Turkey, and a few other places. And then what an I extraordinary said, okay, journey, good. though. What an extraordinary <laughs> journey from then to now. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wonder sometime if I'm not just sitting in a little white room with a straight jacket making all this stuff up. <laughs> or like a Truman Show type thing. Yeah, because then I come back home to where I grew up and it's, you know, yeah, that's where I learned to teach a calf to lead on a rope to show him in the county fair. And <laughs> yeah, you really never know where your life's going to take you. It's insane. Wow. So. I've got I've got to ask then. So how did you how did you go from that, which is such an incredible journey? I've said several times now. How did you go from that to making Fortnite Save the World content on YouTube? <laughs> I've got to ask. Well, the thing is, I've um, I've loved video games from the beginning, but I always um, just focus on one, and I want yeah. to learn every nitnoid thing about it. Just really get into understanding it. So, what which, was your game before Save the World then? Um, actually, I hadn't played for a long time. The last game before that was um, City of Heroes. And, oh, I played that. Yeah, there was City yeah, of Heroes. and it's very much similar. Yeah, I played City of Villains, the other one, where you were a bad yep. guy. Yep, City of Villains, and I absolutely loved it. I love games where you can have a hero, and I'm planning on making a video about it, where you can have basically a mastermind yeah. um, gameplay. Is it still Where, available? Like, I thought they shut all the servers down. Well, yes, they did. Yeah, that was horrible, and I keep worrying about that with um, yeah, Save the sa World. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was, they brought out another game called Champions Online that was going to be similar to it, but it didn't yeah. quite live up to the hype. Yeah, and that's, I mean, with um, City of Heroes and City of Villains, it was doing good, but it was the only game out there at that time really like it. And then yeah. they came out with Champions, and then they came out, I think, with a DC game, and then they came out with a Marvel game, and yeah. it just got saturated. So they said, forget it, we're out of here. Yeah, it's probably the best superhero game that, that I've played in a long time. Probably yeah, ever, to I be fair. Yeah, I loved it. But with um, Save the World, um, my daughter told me about it, because it was a building game, and she thought I'd really love it. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I'll give it a try. And now I'm retired um so i've moved back by family trying to help them out as my parents get older yeah. and um so i have plenty of time i spent a lot of my time reading scientific journals and <laughs> keeping up on news and everything wow. else so like over in the uk i reckon you'd be someone who'd get like you'd get like an mbe or an obe or so have you got any sort of awards from the president over there or <laughs> no no no, Mr. No, Trump's not 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 uh, not, not you that high. Yet. I was a tier wow. or two down from that. Damn. But um, <laughs> no, I just decided at 42, and I had a big choice because there's people I was working with, and they got out of the military, and basically worked for the companies to try to get military technology overseas and All help right. them through that, and they hated their jobs. But they wow. were getting paid tons of money. I mean, they were getting rich off of it big time. Right. But they hated doing it because they knew what was happening with that technology. Go and ahead. I yeah, had a choice course. to make whether to follow that path or what I did was just retire. Can I live off of a military retirement? And I found out I could. So I just kicked back and relaxed. Oh, good for you. And um, but yeah, I started playing Save the World. I really loved it. And of course, the main thing I loved was trap building and yeah. the storm shield defenses. And even though there's other people leveling faster than me and getting through the game faster, mainly by going four man teams yeah. and just overpowering everything by being higher level, I wanted to do it at lower level by outsmarting stuff. And when I did um, Twin Peaks Storm Shield Defense number five, um, I kept getting told that I was lying about soloing it. There's no way you could possibly <laughs> solo it. it. You're lying. And I was like, okay, well, I'll put up a video online of me doing six. And so I put it up. And if you see the video, it's horrible. Yeah, I've, see, I've, I've the seen the video. The graphic card cut out because <laughs> I had a whole computer and everything else. But I muscled through six, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to keep putting them up till 10. 
and, and then took suddenly off. my channel just blew up and everybody how do you do these trap tunnels why are you using launchers? <laughs> launchers don't do damage. Why are you wasting time with launchers? And it's like, well, if they go through the trap tunnel twice, they take more damage than if they go through <laughs> once. So then I started doing everything else. Well, my and friend, someone was asking. It. We've got uh, one of my subs was asking, C3P Aero is called. He was mm -hmm. saying, how do you feel about your builds being replicated by, you know, tens, potentially hundreds of thousands of different people? I love it. Um, and also... The more people who do that, the more people who change them up and find ways to do them better than I originally did them. And yeah. so, no. And one thing, another reason I really wanted to keep the videos going is when I first went through, when you got to Twine Peak, there was hardly anybody there because yeah. most people would quit the game because yeah. they got through the first two zones just by running around shooting things. They got into <laughs> Canny Valley and suddenly they didn't know how to kill anything and they couldn't keep up with the husk coming in, just yeah. shooting. It was quite a big uh, It was quite a big jump, wasn't it, from getting... I remember all the weapons being like, all of a sudden it felt underleveled. So yeah. you kind of got to, you got to Twine Peaks the first time around, because I started my channel on a second run. But the mm -hmm. first time around, I remember thinking... It was such a massive jump. Like all of a sudden, these weapons that we were using were doing next to nothing. And think it almost felt like starting again. I could see why people, why some people would have been put off by that. Yeah. So putting out the trap videos showed people how to do that, which got more people playing the game, which made me happy because I thought the game was a great game with amazing potential. So I wanted more people playing it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's it as well. I mean, I, I, what do you think about the future of it? You know, I, I've spoke about it on a few videos, what my thoughts are. And don't forget, we've had Paragon in the past, which Epic Games famously just <laughs> pulled the plug on once <laughs> once Fortnite took off. What do you think about the future for Save the World? What's your thoughts on that? Um, it is a little dicey. I mean, because if, like I said, I've been in charge of a office and large program on dealing with programming. And... Um, Battle Royale is so simple and easy for programming because basically yeah. all you got to do is come up with new skins. Yeah, as I a mean, business model, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's what every developer yeah. wants. And it's, it's such totally a nice business up. model. The thing is, though, now all the other gaming companies are going to are putting out games to challenge that. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to see their revenue from Battle Royale dropping. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm hoping that will put have them put more into Save the World to give people something different because people are going to get tired and burned out of the PVP thing and want to do something different, I hope. So you see, I, find, I find some things really promising. One thing, I mean, I've got a video on the new Retrieve the Data Machine out later today. Yeah. And although it's <laughs> not, it's not, it's not as exciting as what I wanted it to be. However, I do like the fact that, you know, they're doing something new, they're adding to it. I think yeah. whether they part a good or a bad mission, I was going to be happy with that because I thought at least they're doing something to try it out. Do you know if they put five bad missions out and then one good one and this kind of bit in this kind of beta form that they're doing, I'd yeah. be okay with that. Do you know, because that shows me that they're, they're investing the time into the game or a little bit more time into the game, which is what we need. Yeah, actually this um, um, new one, they call it beta testing yeah. with the new retrieve the data. And yeah, I'll have a video out today also. Um <laughs> is that this is the, to me, the first honest attempt in a long time to make the game more interesting because I challenged the horde was awesome. It was really cool, but yeah. it was 99% the same as last year where all they did was a few minor tweaks to it. Yeah. It was a bit so of a, it, a giant reskin, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so, which I was glad to at least have, but I really wanted new. And when you played this game from the very beginning, the first two or three months, they were actively engaged trying to really make this game work. And then you saw yep. everybody disappear with Battle yep. Roy Royale explosion. I remember. Even just but, to jump, um, getting into missions. Hopefully and they'll keep doing more of this. Um, I do think they need to do some simple little things, like I mentioned in my video about the Gravedigger, where you yep. just add another perk on there, and the perk is skins. And you can change the skin of your weapon and stuff like that. It's not a big deal to me, but yep. I that is where they're making their money in Battle Royale. It isn't on great new content as far as difficulty or things like that. Yep. It's just 
appearance. People want something that looks cool and looks different. I made a, a well, a bit of an unpopular view on Reddit a while back, a few months ago now. But part yeah. of me didn't want the Grave Digger to kind of come back because, and it's not because I don't want anyone to have it or anything like that, but it's kind of, I kind of love the exclusivity of certain weapons. I kind yep. of think that when we first started playing Fortnite Save the World, you know, the the Nocturnos, the Grave Diggers, certain other weapons. I've got a Tsunami sniper rifle I've been looking at lately. I've been messing around with that quite a bit. But I like getting them weapons out that no one's got. Yes. You know, and it's this kind of takes it away. It's like the the Skull Trooper in, uh, in Battle Royale. Now, mm-hmm. everybody's got it. Now, I know they've got that exclusive, you know, thing where they've got the color scheme on it and stuff like that. But I kind of like the exclusivity of it. I kind of like that rareness to it and the... Every time something gets popular, it's like they just give us loads of it. Yeah, well, everyone's probably got Mega Base Kyle now. <laughs> yeah, and that, but that issue came with the scam, the scammers and traders, where if you have unique um, weapons in the game, yeah, that is what causes that explosion. Because I agree with you, I I love the idea of having, you know, the OG guys who came out having the unique weapons because they earned them. And a lot of people even said that, where you had to work for special weapons before. Now you just get them with the gold. Yeah, oh, exactly. And it, it makes it a little bit too easy. I just think yep. a stronger solution would have been to actually have, do you know, like a trading system put in there. Mm-hmm. Do you know? So actually make it so that it's, and, do you know, a real trading, not this scammer gets scammed kind of thing. I don't think we're ever going to stop people trading while ever you can drop weapons. That's no. just a thing. This whole community is bigger than our community is put together that are based just around trading weapons that like they don't really play the game it's just i've got this weapon but if you put like a trading system in place or even another unpopular view that i had a while ago but this is just mainly a talking point it might not be the view that i want but maybe cap weapons perhaps do you know so mean that certain weapons are locked to certain areas do you know that could yes. be one they've done it in mmos yeah. before like world of warcraft used to play a lot uh there were swords like this sword's level 58 so unless you're level 58 you can't use it and you know well, that's I... something that could work yeah, I absolutely agree with that. And they definitely need to put more time in it, more focus. One of the bad things I see with um, Save the World right now, it doesn't seem to have direction as far as what they're doing. It seems mm-hmm. like they just grab whatever person is around, say, hey, you do the updates and whatever <laughs> for this week, and we'll find somebody else to do it next week. I don't see a cohesive you know, this is our plan for the next year. This is where we're going with this. Well, that actually leads me extremely nicely onto my next question, which I wrote down. I was writing questions down last night. What I thought, what, what do I need David to answer? What do I want him to ask? <laughs> and one really great one that I put, this was with help from my son as well. If you were made CEO of Epic Games, in particular, the Save the World department, do you know, what three things would you, what things would like change about it? You know, what, what three things would you actually think, right, these need addressing first? Oh, geez, there's so much. Um, and you can't just pull the plug on Battle Royale. You've got to keep that going. <laughs> <laughs> so it has to be realistic? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be realistic. Um, I'm <laughs> planning on doing a video talking about Storm Shield defenses. First of all, when you do the play with others, there should yeah. be an option there for just Storm Shield defenses. Oh, amen. Um, yeah. Second definitely. of all, when you get into the Storm Shield defense, you should have a pile on there to change the level of it. So if you want to make it more difficult, you can. Yeah. And even on top of that, you should have a choice of whether you can get the exceptional husks that, you know, possibly could have the chrome skin or the exploding death burst, basically more like challenge the horde, but you could actually choose it um, to do that. And yeah, then that once awesome. you complete storm shield defense, number 10, it should go into a sandbox mode, the same as Battle Royale's sandbox. Yeah, that'd and, be great. Yeah, so you can have fun and do what you want. And, and you also, can just invite you the waves in again and to, again. Yeah, destroy your own structures the same way yeah. you could in Challenge the Horde when you're building. Yeah, definitely. One hit. Um, definitely. That is, so that's one of my main focus. The other thing is new um, mission, mission objectives and changing those up. Because it does get very repetitive. Um, it, I remember we've the had first them for time. a long time, haven't we? We've had the same ones for so long. Yeah, it's, it's it's actually a bit odd of a game to not change that up in a game like this in an RPG to have nothing that's kind of new, like no. And this it should be quite easy to do. You would have thought, or maybe yes. I'm maybe I'm being a bit naive there. I don't know. No, um, no, it should definitely 
be kind of easy to do. The thing is, they just aren't focusing on it. But yes, you need new missions. And that's why I'm so hopeful with this beta test thing. I am so glad on how they addressed it of, hey, this is beta. We're going to test it out for two or three weeks, get feedback, and then try to refine it and make it better. And then do that with other missions. And, you know, I definitely think that is a huge plus and a huge step forward. Um, third one, as I said, um, you should have the perk on there to change the skin, whether it is a hero, whether it is a weapon, um, even the traps. I like the old um, launchers with the husks flying on them. And, <laughs> and yeah. um, it doesn't change gameplay as much, but people do like to personalize their stuff. And that also allows you to have things like the Gravedigger, um, just have that initial skin for the people who earned it a year ago. Yeah. But you can still get the same weapon, but it has a new skin on it. And yeah, I, so- I actually think the skins in Save the World would actually be a would actually be quite a big deal. I think people, if they could personalize their own experience, I yes. think that'd be huge. And it's a huge, as you see in Battle Royale, it's a huge revenue generator. Oh, and God, they yeah. need that revenue to hire more people to make the game better. Well, other so, games like Rocket League and other games like that have done exactly the same. Do you know? Yeah, so and games- it would be simple to do. They already have the graphics. They got so many skins from Battle Royale. Yeah, they could absolutely. instantly bring over. And mainly, if you did that over the holidays coming up, they oh, could yeah. cash in unbelievable. The best so. way they could do that is probably make, as a see. I look more from the business side of things. I've always been into. Yeah. I mean, my last nowhere near the extraordinary, you know, as extraordinary <laughs> as what yours has been, but. From the business point of view, I've studied business quite a lot. What I would do is put the game to half price over the holiday period, then bring in some sort of skins and different loot boxes where it's more cosmetic, and I think it would explode. I think you'd see, you know, and especially if you kept the rarity of certain things. So the rarity actually goes on the weapon itself. So you might have a weapon where it's got, I don't know, there's only one of them, but it's got really good perks on it. Or even if you could personalize them a little bit more than what we can, I think the re-perk thing was great. I think that was a really good move by them. But I think if you could personalize something and do it that way, make it half price and bring in skins, I think this game could this game could be much bigger than what they they're doing it. They're kind of bottlenecking themselves a little bit. Absolutely. So that's that's what I'm thinking. All right, let's have a look. What, what other question have we got on here? Let's have a look then. See if I'll see if I can get a subscriber question for you. All right. So oh, oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. So if you were to give, I'm going to give you like um, I'm going to give you three awards to give to other. Fortnite Save the World YouTubers, not including ourselves because we're talking now. <laughs> so you tell me what you, you know, who would you give like these awards to? Okay, so best editing, who would you give the best editing to? Editing? Oh, yeah. geez. Um, actually, Aiden Harris. Yeah, Aiden's, um, Aiden's edits, his intros as well, especially. Plus, I love <laughs> author. Um, the oh, yeah. That he puts in yes. there all the time. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's he's definitely got his Eddie sound. Tory X is another notable one as well. I don't know if you've seen Tory. Tory's yes, doing I some have, great stuff. Quite a bit. But yeah, so yeah, definitely. Okay, so we'd give Aiden that. After yourself, obviously, who's going to win this award. But what about best builder I've got on here as well? I want to go back to the true OG of um, A1 Money. Oh, right. Good choice. He got me motivated. He also taught me to and i get criticized for my shooting when i'm doing my trap videos for some reason (laughs) but i keep trying to say the number one reason i die when i play is because i start focusing on my shooting when i don't focus on it and focus instead on trap building and everything else my survivability (laughs) and success goes way up and i learned that from a1 get this money and he's been around longer than any of us current oh, ones. Oh yeah, I definitely. Yeah, definitely there before me. He was someone who I was watching when I first got started. Yeah. Do you do, you do any? Uh, do you do any impressions of Fortnite Save the World YouTubers? <laughs> no. Or any impressions? I can. I, I do. I do a pretty mean impression of Everyone Get This Money. I think. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you're going to do an impression of cookies, but yeah, let's. No, let I can't do. I can't do cookies. Stuff. Do you want to hear this? All right, okay, hold on. I, I need. To, I need a bit of practice. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Uh, let me think what I can say. Um. Okay. Okay. I may want to get this money, and in today's <laughs> video, we're going to look at Fortnite save the world. 
<laughs> that ain't too bad. That's not bad, is it? That's not. No. That wasn't even a sound clip. I know that's what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> But now, A1 Get This Money is absolutely fantastic. I've been watching him for a long time. I did a, a podcast a while ago. Uh, I don't know if you saw that one. I think it was before you'd started on making the videos. We did a podcast quite a long time ago now. And he was on there and he was super nice. Him and Sly Gumby as well. Oh, geez. I would love to hear that. I got to go check that out. Yeah, if you go into my uh, community tab, I posted it not long ago, I think. So you should be able to find it in there. But it was really fun. But we should probably do something like that again. That would be great. Okay, third award would be without knowing obviously because a lot of these don't have face cam who would you say would be the best dressed Fortnite save the world youtuber <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the community questions that i've got i promise that ask demon these. joe demon oh yeah absolutely Absol demon joe france well we've got demon next wednesday so next week that's what i'm going to be doing i'm going to mean to have uh, demon joe's actually agreed to come on uh, oh, he's and actually do one of these silent. as well so i'm really looking forward to that i can tell him that now <laughs> David Dean says you're most likely the best dressed Fortnite Save the World YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David. Well, final question I've got then. Uh, I've got more, but I think that this would be a good time. Um, someone's also put Scuff Studios, uh, who's got a YouTube channel as well, has also put, How do you like your steak? If you have steak, that is. We're assuming that you do. <laughs> What's that? Our steak? Yeah, how would you have your steak? If you went to a restaurant and you ordered steak, said, How would you like your steak? What, what, what would you have? Um, medium rare, medium but rare. I gotta tell you, if there's barbecue ribs, I'm going for the ribs. <laughs> good choice, good choice. It's very American, that is it? The ribs. It's funny because <laughs> yeah. I think we're having that for our dinner today. I think, I think I'll have to check. <laughs> All right, mate. Listen, David. Massive thanks for joining me today, mate. This is the first one I'm doing. Hopefully, I'm going to get to speak to a few more uh, Fortnite Save the World YouTubers as well, because I'm I'm kind of trying to bring us a bit together so that we're doing a lot more things uh, as a group. So if you'd be interested in projects later on, hopefully we can stay in touch and we can get something going. Absolutely. And I got to say that one thing I loved about this because I was told doing anything on YouTube, you're just gonna get tons of negative comments and such a negative community. <laughs> yeah. I love this community. They're great people. <laughs> you and me are competitors, but we laugh and joke and we help each other out. Um, same thing with Aiden Harris and yeah. Sly Gumby and Split Screen and all those other guys. Absolutely. I, th um, I think that's one thing but, I've really enjoyed. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I've got such a good uh, Discord and the other Fortnite Save the World YouTubers, yourself, Tori, Aiden, um, you know, Morgan as well, Split Screen. I've all been absolutely fantastic. And I was speaking to Demon Joe this morning and another such a nice guy. So I feel really lucky that we're in this kind of niche. It's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. All right, absolutely fantastic. So guys, if you've not seen David Dean already, which I am 100% sure you will have, but if you've not, I will link his channel down below. I'm going to do a bit of a series on it. So hopefully I'll have a, a bit of a playlist. So we'll have a Let's Talk David Dean. Then we'll have Demon Joe. Hopefully we'll get Aiden involved in it as well. Uh, Tori X. I'm hoping to... to Get Checker back. He's been missing for a, a couple of weeks. So I'm hoping yeah. to uh, to get Checker back in this as well because he's been absolutely brilliant. And he was someone that inspired me when I first started. I mean, oh, I, I know I keep saying we're ending this, but just one more question, one more question. Yeah. Who would, other than A1 Get This Money, because we know he was one of them, which, which Save the World YouTubers inspired you when you started or were there not many around when you first came onto the scene? Um, actually, because at first there was a huge wave of people doing youtube videos and you could tell they just were trying to cash in yeah um, oh yeah definitely and there was a few that stood out a1 get this money and dash brandon he doesn't do too oh, much yeah videos but those were the two soloing storm shield defenses yep and yep. um i really enjoyed their videos definitely great do you know i did i did a video about when A1 Get This Money started, I did one video and I thought, this isn't working for me. And I started off YouTube wanting to do indie games. And I thought, this this one's not working out. It's probably not going to work. And I saw A1 getting some traction on it and people watching it. And I thought, I was playing it off camera loads. I'd got, I'd got quite a way into the game off camera. And I thought, I need to start that again and go back to it. That looks like loads of fun. So A1 Get This Money is someone for me who I looked at and thought, I want to do what this guy's doing. So he inspired me massively when I first started, hugely. No, uh, yeah, it's definitely great. And yeah, as soon as Battle Royale came out, all the people chasing money yeah. oh, and not yeah. doing videos because they enjoyed the, vi the game, um, they took off to Battle Royale. And yeah. suddenly, um, all you had left were basically people who actually wanted the game to grow. 
Yeah, which I think's I think's working. Like I said, I think so far as it is right now, I love the community we've got now. I'll be keen to see how it changes once it goes free to play. I think that'll be interesting. Um, you know, to see how the dynamics change or which new YouTubers come in to try and cover it as well, because there's going to be a lot of a lot of YouTubers, probably bigger YouTubers coming in to cash in on that as well. So I'll be quite keen to see who kind of enters the fray then. Yeah, but I think those guys will come. They'll try to do a money sweep for a month or two, and then they'll head back out. Yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dave. Well, massive, massive thanks for joining me. I can't thank you enough. Uh, and what a great way to start this series off. And what an extraordinary life. Do you know, I don't think if if someone asked me the question, who do you think has got the most epic CV? I think yours would have to be up there of all the people that I even know in life, do you know? So yeah. a massive and thanks for sharing that with us, David. Let I know me you add have something because we're just going to keep this going all day. But um, <laughs> just remember with my life, basically when I was 28, I was massive debt in a horrible place, a widower raising a child, and I totally rebuilt it in my late 20s and early 30s. And you can do that. So if you don't have traction or direction in your life right now, just keep doing something positive until something clicks. And the other thing is people try to make comments about my IQ and stuff. As I said, I can't, well, I can't even do English correctly, <laughs> let alone a foreign language. Um, yes, I'm good with math and numbers and stuff like that. But um, yeah, you just got to find your niche in life and it's amazing where you'll go. Yeah, ma ma to be fair, mate, with on this interview alone, you've massively inspired me. And, you know, and I'm sure you're going to inspire, well, continue to inspire lots of other people. You know, so a massive, I, as I said, I can't thank you enough. And, and what an emotional and inspirational journey. So massive, massive thanks for that. All right, man. You take care. Okay, take care then, guys. Don't forget to comment down below if you've got any other questions. Hopefully, David will jump into the comments on this video in a couple of days' time, uh, and he'll be able to, you know, I'm sure you won't mind that, David. Is that okay? I'm just kind of signing I'm signing you up for a job here without even asking. No <laughs> but problem. Tonight, just to jump in and talk to you guys as well. So massive thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you next week when we speak to Demon Joe France on the next Let's Talk. Thanks for watching.